Hello and welcome to Los Angeles. It is so good to have you here with us. We are just outside the Bank of California Stadium where tonight we've got a huge NWSL matchup coming up with Angel City FC hosting the Portland Thorns. I'm Poppy Miller alongside host of the Attacking Third podcast, Lisa Roman. Lisa, what a night to be in California. We're sat here in the sunshine. We've got a great NWSL match to look forward to. There's lots of fans around us already. I mean, does life get better than this? It really doesn't, Poppy. This is truly spectacular to be here at the game, uh, talking with fans, interacting, especially yeah. after the NWSL was on a week break. So yeah. I'm itching for another NWSL game, and we've got a great matchup between Angel City and Portland coming up. So are all the fans that are here around us as well at Bank of California Stadium, but that's not all we've got to look forward to with women's football this summer. Coming up, we've got the CONCACAF W Championship from Monterey, Mexico, that also serve as the qualifier not only for the World Cup but for the Olympics as well. We know the US women's national team have just had two friendlies against Colombia in preparation for this huge international window but let's talk about the roster. I mean what were your initial takeaways from the side that Vlatko Andonovsky has selected Lisa? When you look at the U.S. women's national team roster, it's such a great mix of veterans and new generational mm -hmm. players. Heading into a World Cup qualifiers and an Olympic qualifier, there's so much on the line for these players and for the United States. So when you look at this roster, there are 13 players that have never played in a qualifying international match. That is a lot of players. Does that getting, worry you? It, it worries me a little bit. However, I've been so impressed with the play of these young players and, and how confident mm -hmm. they are in their abilities. And also, Black Wendonofsky has tasked his veterans on this team, Megan Rapino, Alex Morgan, and Becky Sauerbron, in being those veterans. Mm -hmm. Those three combined for over 60 international qualifying caps. So they've got the experience at this level. They know how to lead these younger generational players, and that's one of the most exciting things about this roster. Well, you mentioned the veterans that have come back into the side, Megan Rapino, Alex Morgan, who's just having a phenomenal season, both for club and country at the minute. She's back with the U.S. Women's National Team. We mentioned the friendlies against Colombia. What did you take away from those two matches, and what did you learn about this U.S. Women's National Team heading into this window? Poppy, I had two huge takeaways from the two matches that the U.S. played against Colombia, one of them being offensive production, and the second one being finding a rhythm between these two sides. When we look at the offensive production, production that the U.S. had in these two matches. They outshot Colombia 40 to 7. However, they only scored five goals in these two matches, but the shots and the chances were there. A lot of credit goes to Colombia goalkeeper Catalina Perez. She had so many great saves to keep Colombia in this match against the United States. And then when we look at the offensive production and how that couples with the rhythm that the United States was able to find between the two matches against Colombia, the United States had nine different starters going into this second game and yet they were still able to find a rhythm create that offensive production and only eight training sessions for the United States since they were called into camp until their very first qualifying game. So that rhythm needs to come in these matches that they're playing. And we saw that against Colombia from the United States. Yeah, we saw plenty of rotation. Having said all that from, you know, the tactical look from what we saw against Colombia, who is your player to watch in these qualifiers coming up? It has to be forward for the United States, Mallory Pugh. She is in tremendous form right now, both for club and for country. And although she's only 24, one of the young generational players on this roster she has been in this role before she got her first international qualifying cap when she was just 17 years old at the 2016 qualifier so she knows how to play in these high stakes situations and her play on the pitch has been really really fun to watch she's doing such a great job of finding the pockets of space understanding how to play off her teammates and she's got a nose for the goal her scoring right now is at an all-time high and that increases her confidence with every game she plays she's absolutely thriving isn't she but she's struggled with injury over the past few seasons what is it about her game that's really allowing her all this success at the minute is it just a matter of fitness do you think is it that simple Poppy one thing that Mallory Pugh has said is that she's playing with freedom right now she's not putting pressure on herself to perform to score goals to get on the stat sheet instead she's having fun and it truly shines every time she steps on the pitch mm -hmm. because she does look like she's having fun and by letting go of that pressure she has on herself and playing with more freedom, she has really grown and evolved herself throughout this game. All right. Well, is the U.S. women's national team head to Monterey, Mexico? They're a favorite for many out there. Are they a favorite for you to win this competition? They are a favorite for me. The United States are 
reigning world champions at this point. They got bronze in the Olympics in 2020 in Tokyo. And now as they head into this tournament, it's a change, mm -hmm. right? Vlako Andonovsky, this is his first World Cup qualifying tournament, his yeah. first World Cup. And there's so many new players, but the United States are still my favorite. On the other side of that, though, Lisa, what concerns you about this U.S. team? If you have a concern heading into qualifiers with this side, what would it be? It's not so much with the United States and their team and their roster, but rather how impressive the CONCACAF other nations have been. Uh, other nations aren't scared to play the United States anymore. When you look at teams like Haiti that they're going up against, this is a team that had a 44-plus yeah. goal differential in the World Cup qualifiers. They know how to score goals. And the United States isn't the top dog powerhouse anymore because these other nations are gaining more training sessions. They're getting more confidence in their ability. They're getting more fun. Funding, which allows them to be able to compete at a higher level. And I just hope the United States is ready to go in for a fight. All right, well, let's talk about some of the other games that we've got coming up then from Monterey. We've got Mexico against Jamaica. That's one of the other ones that we'll see on July 4th. Who do you favor in that game and what are you expecting? This is a huge match for Mexico. It's the first time for these World Cup qualifiers that they're not being hosted in the United States and they're being hosted mm -hmm. by Mexico. So that gives Mexico a home field advantage in the sense. And as they go up against Jamaica, an incredibly talented team in the reggae yeah. girls, it's going to be a battle. I expect a physical match between these two sides. Mexico is going to have to defend a little bit more than they're used to. However, Mexico can score goals in a variety of ways. So I have Mexico taking three points at the end of this match. All right, so Mexico on home soil there. Costa Rica and Panama, who have you got in this one? Two teams that have been battling Panama, looking for their very first World Cup qualifying bid. And Costa Rica, a team that's been to the World Cup, and they've got big stars on their team. NWSL fans recognize Rocky Rodriguez, Shirley yes. Cruz, two players that have been tremendous for Costa Rica. And Costa Rica coming off of two friendlies in this June window against Haiti. They split the wins there, but they scored two goals in each of those matches and four different goal scores. So I give the upper hand to Costa Rica. All right, giving the upper hand to Costa Rica there. Let's talk about the reigning Olympic champions, though, Canada. They'll go up against Trinidad and Tobago. Surely you've got to be favoring Canada in this one. I am favoring Canada, but I believe that Trinidad and Tobago is going to put up a really big fight. They are looking for their first bid to a World Cup, mm -hmm. and they've got a lot on the line. They won their group in the qualifiers, but going up against this Canadian side is going to be a huge test, especially when you look at Canadians defense. They've got Kaylin Sheridan in goal, Vanessa Gilles in the back line, Kadisha. They've got uh, all these incredible players, Ashley Lawrence along that back line. And Canada also knows how to score goals and they are the reigning Olympian champions. So it, I have Canada in this one as well. It's a lot of pressure, isn't it, in this very short window, not only with the World Cup qualification, but the Olympic qualification on the line. Do you like this format? I do like this format. It's also the first year that CONCACAF has four spots in the World Cup mm -hmm. for 2023. Last World Cup, they only had three spots. So it gives another opportunity for another nation in CONCACAF to get a bid to the World Cup yeah. and compete there. And if you make it past the first round of this W championship, you're into the World Cup. And then the pressure is on to qualify for the Olympics. There's a lot on the line yeah. for all of these nations. All right, so a massive window is coming up. We are just going to enjoy this LA sunshine for a little bit longer, though. We've got an NWSL match coming up tonight, Angel City against the Portland Thorns. A reminder, you can watch that game on Paramount+. Plus. And let me just remind you as well that you can catch up with Lisa Roman and Sandra Herrera on the Attacking Third podcast. It's your home for the NWSL, US Women's National Team and all things women's football. It is an absolute fantastic listen. We'll see you from LA very soon, but for now, download and enjoy the Attacking Third podcast.